So let's put together the uh, ROM PCB today. There's very few parts on this. Let's take a look at what we got. We got some sockets, we got the header pins, we've got some caps. Now remember the caps need to go on uh, first. Those are the lowest on the PCB. It makes installing everything else that much easier. Um, we've got the uh, pins for the jumpers that will select um, which 8K block of the ROM we're actually going to be um, placing down at address zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the caps in. That's one of the more interesting things about this design is that as you noticed, we put the RAM up at 32K at 8,000 hex. That's where it starts. The ROM, we're only looking at 8K blocks of ROM. So there's actually nothing between that 8K and the start of the 32K. There's actually nothing there. So we're looking at these 8K blocks of ROM. Um, and he's got a couple different pieces of software that come in those. I think the first block is, is basic, basically. And then there's some kind of uh, system control manager or something in one of the other blocks. You can actually program the missing blocks. It is a one-time programmable ROM, but once you program a section of memory, um, you can still program the unused section of memory. All right, well, that was pretty easy. Now all we have to do is put the sockets in. That really doesn't take much. All right, let's go ahead and put the ROM in now. Now remember, the ROM is actually uh, what's called an OTP or one-time programmable, but you can actually re not reprogram, you can actually program sections that have never been programmed before. So uh, Z80 Kits has actually only programmed, I think, a few of the 8K blocks. Um, we'll look at that when we uh, go over to the computer. We'll talk about the sections, but there are a few uh, banks, 8K banks, that you could put some additional code into, but you can only do that one time. When something's there, you can't do it again. Uh, those jumpers are actually used to control uh, which 8K bank is going to show up at address zero. All right, let's go over to the computer, and um, I will show you the schematic and we'll see how this thing works. All right. When we look at the Z80 memory model, the Z80 sees this block, 64K block. And remember, we're putting memory, uh, RAM at a certain location, we're putting the ROM down near the bottom, we've got some uh, ports that are accessible. So we're able to plug and play different pieces into that memory space. So that's exactly what's happening with the ROM. If we take a look at the, um, the top three address lines, this is basically the chip enabled. It's either turning on the ROM chip enabled or not. It's making it accessible or it's not. So anything that you try to address, the Z80 tries to address above 8K, it can't because of those two OR gates. Now, the other thing that's interesting is, is the read-write. So if you look at the memory request and it's a read, you also get um, an output enabled. That's what's going on right here. So here you're, you're either letting the chip be selected or not based upon the memory location being accessed. The ROM is in low memory in the first 8K basically. And if we're do, we can't do writes to a ROM, it's read only. So. <laughs> So that's what this logic is doing right here, is making sure that we're doing memory access and that we want to do a read. So then what are these jumpers? Well, these jumpers, if we take a look at this um, ROM that he, he's using, I got, looks like I might have a typo there, I'll have to fix that. 
it's EEPROM. Um, this is the the chip that's being used, and it actually is 64K large. So we have eight blocks of 8K each. So what um, what the designer has done basically is let us select which 8K block is actually addressed starting at address zero. And that's exactly what this table is that I created for you. And if you notice, Microsoft Basic um, is set with these all being uh, zeros. And the way that you set them to zero is obviously you want to tie them to ground. Um, and then the monitor, if they're all set to one, which means that in between here we have six other 8K blocks that we can program. Now, just because it says it's a one-time program, I found out from Spencer, the designer, Spencer um, Owen, I found out that those can still be programmed. It's like a one-time thing. So if you've never touched that block, you never flipped you know, zeros to ones, then you can actually do that. So, um, I don't know, we might actually, I do have an EEPROM programmer, we might actually try to program something into these blocks and play with it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I mean, all of these, it's amazing how simple this computer really is. And it can really teach you so much. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn. Um, in the next episode, we're actually going to finish the CPU and the backplane together, trying to speed all this stuff up. So once that portion is done, in the same episode, we'll apply power and actually try to bring up Microsoft Basic. All right, guys, hang in there. Remember, learn something new every day. You're given lots of opportunities in life. Take them while you can. Take care, guys.